Try to just do that the whole video, just <laughs> ah, that would be annoying. Uh, hey folks, Adam here. Uh, popping a cold one. By cold one, I mean Cherry Coke Zero. Uh, let's see. It's been a few days since I did a video. I don't know why this cat's trying to get over here, because she's not usually the one that bugs me. What's going on? Go find something to do. I've got a video to shoot here. Anyway, um... Wasn't sure what I was going to do a video about. I had grand, delus delusions of grandeur, as they say in Star Wars. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. I got, for some reason, I came down with this weird fever uh, Monday night. I just, out of the blue, started feeling really sick and woke up in the middle of the night on Monday. Well, I guess it would be Tuesday then. Uh, about 3 in the morning with like a 100 plus fever. And, uh, I don't know. It was just really bizarre. And I had to call into work, which I didn't want to do because I'm out of uh, personal time and vacation time for the year because we're getting close to the end of the year. So basically, I have to eat a day. So I was really, really not digging calling in. But what are you going to do? So uh, the fever ended up breaking. <laughs> Later that day, like 5 in the afternoon, finally, I woke up with a sweat-soaked pillow and was like, yeah, that's that's uh, very uh, very gross, Adam. Thanks for telling everybody. Um, but, uh, and I felt shaky and shit, and even this morning I felt kind of nauseated, my stomach a little shaky, but this evening I feel all right. So I thought we'd roll. I really, I haven't, you know, I bought a few Christmas items, and and I'm all pretty much done with the Christmas shopping. I gotta buy uh, buy wrapping paper because that's one thing I did forget. So I gotta go get some wrapping paper. But uh, in the last video I did, that was the friggin' marathon that that it was. Uh, at the end there, I went over and I was panning over against some of the other stuff in the in the um, dresser and shit. And, uh, am I switching um for and, uh, and, uh, Captain Raz uh, left a comment saying, uh, he was kind of curious what my GameCube games I had over there were. And tell you the truth, I don't have that many. I thought maybe I might have some more squirreled away, and I looked around, but pretty much whatever was in that little stack over there is what I have, and I'll, I'll kind of explain why that is, uh, as we get there. Uh, but I did pick up a couple of things. Tonight, I did have to go to Target because one of the things I ordered, Amazon Prime, uh, shipped it, and then it didn't show up. And then they said, well, you know, it's not going to get there in the two days like we said it's going to with this special service you pay through the nose for. Uh, but give us a few days. It'll get there. You know, so I wait another five days that they told me to wait. It still doesn't show up. And so they're like, uh, oops, our bad. Well, you can get a refund. You know, so I go and click the refund thing and they're like, you know, they send me this email and they're like, uh, we will process your refund within two to three days. And, uh, by the way, the item you ordered is no longer in stock. So you can't order it again. You know, and I'm like, well, shit, thank you. Hey, stupid cat's doing the clothes thing. They're annoyed because I just got home and I'm doing this video instead of paying attention to the cats. That's what the problem is. That's their problem, not my problem or your all's problem. And so, anyway, uh, I go to Amazon and I go to the website or the page. I type in the thing I'm looking for, which was something for my sister for Christmas, and the exact same thing comes up, and it's sponsored by Amazon and this company, and you can only buy it from Amazon, and that's it, through their website. But, when I click on it, it says it's in stock on their little thing. But the email they sent me to get my money back 
says it's no longer in stock. So I'm like, well, I don't trust you all. I don't know if it's in stock or not. You didn't get the first one to me in two days, so why the hell would I think you'd get the next one to me in two days? And we're getting closer to Christmas, so I'll just go to Target and buy one. So that's what I did. And as far as Amazon Prime goes, I accidentally signed up for it last Christmas. Uh, I did the trial or something so I could get expedited shipping. And then they rolled me right into it at the end of it, which I didn't know they were going to do. Shame on me. And then... I just said, screw it, I'll keep it. Well, the thing is, folks, is you know what the type of stuff I... I'm a collector. I buy uh, pops and, and stuff like that, and movies and other things, and stuff that I don't want getting, you know, tore up in shipping. Well, Amazon Prime does not package stuff. At least the locations that are shipping the shit to me do not pack the stuff correctly for that type of protection. And half the stuff I got in the first three or four months was damaged. And they were like those pops and things and the boxes be all caved in on one side. And I'm like, what the hell, you know? And finally, I just wrote, I wrote to Amazon and I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy with Prime and I won't be getting it again. You know, and actually I went to cancel it is what I wanted to do. And they asked me why I wanted to cancel it. And that's when I entered, you know, this, that, and the other. You guys can't ship for shit. And still to this day, I have it. And I'll explain. When they got back with me, they're like, well, we'll give you a 50% refund on the subscription for the year if you'll keep it and consider, you know, renewing if we do better. Well, they haven't done better. Not by me, anyway. Um... My main problem with them now is I stopped ordering collectible shit from them. I started either ordering it from specific toy websites or whatever where I know I can get it and they'll ship it in good condition, you know, because people give a shit about that stuff. Or eBay, which I did gamble on one on eBay, but they do give me a full refund and let me keep it. So, you know, and another one I got on eBay was, was okay. So, okay, USA. Um, and that's from Bloodsport. Anyway, um, so I kept it. But in the interim, the shit that I have bought hasn't been package critical. But half the time, it does not come in two days. It takes three, four, five days. It says guaranteed two-day shipping. And I, you know, maybe 50% of the time I've got my shit in two days. You know? That's not my problem. That's not, you know, if they want to blame the post office or whoever they want to blame, that's on them. But I ain't getting my shit in two days. So I'm not renewing it. I, I put it on, I made sure to put it on will not renew when expired. And I won't, I won't renew it. And I don't recommend it to collectors uh, unless you've had really good luck, which I can't imagine if you have it in the board of collectibles through Amazon then, you know, there's I wouldn't buy it if you're a collector. That's all I'm saying. If you want it for the music and the streaming and the videos and all that stuff, yeah, I ended up watching the Tick series, the first part of it anyway, which is not going to pick up the second part till the next part of the year. So they fucked me on that because now I'd have to renew a whole season or a whole year subscription in order to see those things, unless I buy them individually or whatever, maybe I can. I don't even know how that works or whether you got to have Prime. Because if not, I think they did this on purpose with the show because I like the show, but they only put like six or eight episodes on. <coughs> and there's like another six or eight, but they're releasing them after the first of the year. And I bet most people's shit resets around the first of the year around Christmas time when they probably signed up for it. So good good thinking, Amazon. You got everybody with that one. So, but I don't care about most of that, most all of that. And I and I can I can see the rest of the tick series. Don't don't worry about me. But you know, anyway, I had to go to Target. That that's the whole point of this story, folks. The whole point of the story is I had to go to Target tonight. And I really didn't want to, but the Target in Independence, Missouri, is like a, a desert wasteland. There's hardly anybody ever there. 
Although there's a Walmart about a mile away that's always freaking packed, which I find hilarious. It's like the cost difference is, is negligible for the convenience of being able to get into the store. I mean, really. So that's my opinion. So I sound like a bitch again. I'm bitching again, ain't I? Ain't. Ain't, ain't, ain't. Ain't I bitching? I am. But we're done bitching. We're, we're on the happy stuff now. So anyway, what we're going to do tonight, folks, I'm going to show you a couple things that I got. One of them was at Target tonight. And then I'm going to show you my GameCube games and explain the collection. And actually, because Captain Raz got me interested in what I had over there, I kind of forgot what I had. <coughs> and then I remembered, excuse me, froggy in the throat. Then I remembered that there were a couple games that I did want to get at one time that I never picked up. So, I ordered a few. So, well, not going to show addresses and shit, but I'll hold them up. Three of them. So, anyway, what I picked up at Target, I think I ended up spending as much on cat food in this movie as I did on my sister's deal. Which I knew that was going to happen. That's why I hate going to the stores. I end up spending as much or more money on myself as I do on other people around Christmas. I usually just try to order it off the internet, but... Um, what I picked up and they had on sale and they had all the Game of Thrones seasons on sale for some reason I mean they weren't like a ton but they uh, you know like really really cheap but they were like marked down like $10, $15 on some of the seasons <clears throat> and uh, I know a lot of people did Game of Thrones I don't mind it but I'm behind I'm only on like season beginning of season 5 I've maybe watched like one or two episodes basically I'm, I'm I watched through season 4 because basically, at this point, I'd have to go back and watch um, Season 5 again. I'm probably leaning out of frame. Anyway, I'm trying to frame the camera better, too. I'm, like, on a booster seat and shit. And lowered the camera to try to get me more here. I tend to hump over and lean back and shit so you can't even see me. So, But the eye of the camera looks like it's way low compared to where it's shooting me. So, I, I don't know. Or hopefully I'm in frame. Anyway... What I picked up, and it was on sale for a few bucks cheaper, was uh, a great movie. It is a John Wick 2. John Wick. Uh, if you haven't seen the John Wicks, both of them, they're both awesome. If you like gun fu. <laughs> uh, I, I remember when my, when my uh, buddy I worked with came into the office and he goes, he goes, I got two words for you when I came in. And he goes, John Wick, and I go, what, what in the hell's John Wick? And he's like, it's, it's the new Keanu Reeves movie. And I go, Keanu Reeves? I mean, I like Keanu Reeves, but he's not like the draw usually for me to go see something. Usually he's a character in something. I really like Constantine. The first Matrix was really pretty good. Constantine was really awesome in my opinion. But, you know, I don't usually gravitate toward being like, oh, Keanu Reeves has a new m new movie out. I got to go see it. I mean, not like that. Well, now I am because I love these John Wick movies. I actually broke down and went and saw the second one at the theater, but the first one was already out of the theater uh, by the time I had heard about it. And uh, he goes, just check it out. So I, I you know, <laughs> I ended up checking it out, and I was like, wow, this is pretty fucking awesome. So, when the second one came out, I was all hyped and ran up to the theater to, to see it. And it was good, and it definitely leaves you, leaves you waiting for the third. There's definitely going to be a third. Uh, which is good, you know, because they're, they're, they're quality. But uh, I have the first one on DVD. I think I got it around Christmas time as well, and it was on sale. But this one has um, the DVD and the digital code. I won't show you my digital code, I guess, even though I never use them. But it's got the DVD and the Blu-ray inside. Hope it's in frame. I don't know if I'm hitting it somewhere around here. I'm not cutting the bottom off everything. Gosh dang it. Uh, but it has a DVD and the Blu-ray, which, you know, I watch mainly the Blu-ray now. But, um, but the, the uh, special features... It does have a commentary track with Keanu Reeves, which I was kind of like, well, that's cool. I like the commentary tracks. Theatrical trailer, 
Uh, dog wick. I don't know what that is. It says it's a short. Kill count. I suppose that's how many people he kills in the movie. Wick's toolbox. Not sure what that is. Chamber check. Evolution of a fight scene. I think that's the one where... Never mind. I won't give away any spoilers. Uh, Carfu ride along. As above, so below. The underworld of John Wick. That sounds like a featurette or something. And then it's got a... Retro Wick, exploring the unexpected success of John Wick, because the first one they they don't really they didn't really think it was going to do as well as it did, and it blew up. So that's evidently about that. And then they have something called Training John Wick, which is probably Keanu Reeves learning, you know, different gun fu moves and things like that. So, so if you haven't seen it, definitely watch the first one first. Although you don't really have to watch the first one. Watch the first one first. It's worth it. And then watch this one. John Wick 2. I'm hoping the camera doesn't run out of battery. And I don't know how long I've even been talking. And I lost my mirror. I still can't tell the mirror thing. Looks like it's been running for 11 minutes or so, I think. Okay. Uh, the next thing. I bought this because they were... They uh, had posted on one of the toy websites that I buy things from from a time to time that they had found this warehouse stash of these and it was like a previously sold out you know limited not a limit I don't know if it was a limited edition but they're previously sold out so you're only buying them on eBay or secondary markets but they had found some so they had them marked down for like you know almost 50% off or whatever so I was like cool and you know how I am I got an Elvira fetish <laughs> So, I bought this, and uh, I paid a penny for it, but it, it was worth it. Um, it's got a cool stand and stuff, but I'm loath to take it out of the box. I'm just one of those people that I've been buying stuff and keeping it in the box so long that if it's a box I can't put it back in without damaging it in some way to get it out, then I don't want to take it out of the box. And this is one of those, like, bubble wrap sealer things that you have to cut it out of basically and I just don't want to so I'll probably leave it in it but I'll go ahead and show it um, this was an as is sale so the corner is a little bit ding but it could have been worse so I'm fine with it but it is a a mock time Monstars Elvira Mistress of the Dark figure and uh I don't know. I think her bust is a little bit bustier on this than normal. But, uh, you know, most guys aren't going to complain. I've always been a tit man myself. So, what are you going to do? That might be why I have an Elvira fetish. But, <coughs> they didn't skimp on the cleavage, I'm telling you. But, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't even know if there's anything on the bottom, actually. It's got artwork on the side. The artwork on the, on the, uh, the one on the box... Uh, she has like rouge on her cheeks and I noticed on this one it doesn't on the on the actual figure It actually doesn't have that. I just happened to notice that but uh Other than that, it's it's really pretty good luck and it's pretty it's sculpted pretty well and uh, It looks pretty cool the skin stand in there's got like skulls on it and stuff and looks like like a dungeon floor or something which I think is pretty cool, but like I said, I just don't know if I want to take it out even though this corner it's kind of messed up, and you could kind of slit it along the bottom. But you have to slit it along both sides in order to pull it up to get it out. And I just don't want to do that. So, Oh, I thought this said for ages 8 and up. It says for ages 18 and up. I was like, well, yeah, I don't know. An 8-year-old might dig that. Anyway, that was a, a little pickup that came this week. Um... I, like I said, that was kind of an impulse thing. I'd forgotten it, and I was going through some old bookmarks. Why am I so damn hot? I was wondering why I was so damn hot. I got this damn hat on and this coat. Um, good, we can kick it, kick it old school now. My sister got me this shirt a long time ago, but it's too fat to wear it for a while. So we'll set these to the side and get to the game and cube yours. Uh, GameCube. Anyway, 
GameCube, the first one I bought was actually from GameStop. I bought a refurb GameCube, and it was just one of the purple ones. And I think I ended up giving that GameCube to Cousin Joe at one point, just for the hell of it, because I had found a couple of silver GameCubes, and one of them had the Game Boy uh, Reader thing that clicks on the bottom. And uh, I had to... I think I had to buy the disc, the boot up disc thing. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't just burn it or whether it was burn proof or something. I don't know. But I remember I had to buy the disc thing, the boot up disc for it. But I, ha I, I looked in my other stuff. I definitely have two GameCubes. They're both silver. And one of them has that, that GameCube, the Game Boy thing on it that reads Game Boy Advanced and Back Games. So, uh, I'm pretty sure I gave gave Joe uh, that purple GameCube. I think it crapped out on him, too, which doesn't surprise. It was a refurb. I mean, I've had better luck with stuff at, at the thrift store than I have at GameCube, uh, GameStop. I, I don't buy systems at GameStop, usually. That was my one time I did. And part of that is going to lead into this because when I bought the games, when I was buying games for the GameCube, I'm not a huge Nintendo fan. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, and this was a video, I think I'm still going to do a video on it, but um, my love-hate with Nintendo because I really, really love the 8-bit Nintendo and all the nostalgia and everything that goes with it and all my memories. And I really actually love the Super Nintendo, Super Metroid, uh, the uh, the Link to the Past. Uh, I never really played Super Mario World, but I've also told you I'm not a big Mario fan. But the Final Fantasy III, uh, Breath of Fire, um, uh, I'm trying to remember what else I really played on there. Um, Mortal Kombat 3, I played the shit out of on it. Excuse me, that's kind of rude. And, uh, it's funny because I said that was rude, but then I cussed, cussed all the way through the video. Anyway, um, I just, I don't know, after that was the Nintendo 64. And I just, I didn't like the Nintendo 64. I had a hate on for it, I guess. I just, I, I didn't like the fact that they stuck with cartridges, even though they didn't load. I didn't like the controller at all. And I felt like a lot of the games were more animated and more geared toward kids than they were adults. So I never really gave a shit about the N64. And then the GameCube came out. And the GameCube to me was, looked like the same stuff. It was just novelty, shape, colors. The controller was still kind of awkward. You know, and I have a Wavebird controller for the GameCube, thank God. But that I got at the thrift store, actually. Uh, but... I just, I, I didn't really care for it, so I didn't even, I didn't even consider buying one. I had a PlayStation 2. <laughs> so, folks, I'm back after an hour-long unintentional uh, rain delay. Well, not really rain delay, delay nonetheless. Uh, camera ran out of battery. Uh, what's funny is, luckily, very luckily, and I kind of owe my cat, even though it pissed me off, she was trying to claw my clothes, so I went to to scold her, and then I checked the camera to see how long I had left, and it was off. So I checked the battery, I, ch I plugged it in, and saw the battery was dead, and I checked the video, and luckily I'd only been talking for about another minute or so before, uh, before I caught it. So I'm glad it wasn't going on forever. So, um... Anyway, let's dive back in. I guess my videos are a marathon, not a sprint, so we'll get going here. Uh, anyway, I was talking about different systems, the Nintendo, basically, up through the, the GameCube generation. Um, yeah, I had a PS2 is what I had, and it was the only... I had a PS1, and then I had a PS2. Uh, Xbox was new to the scene at that point, and... They came around after the PlayStation had already been out for three or four years. So, you know, I didn't really even consider getting an Xbox either at the time. Uh, later on, when I started re-collecting, uh, 
I ended up buying an Xbox at Vintage Stock because they had one in the original box. And I don't think it had the uh, whatever packing they put in it to keep it like in position in the box and all that. It was just the, the box. But it was either buy the one with the box or without. It was the same price. So why not get the one with the box? <sighs> you have to forgive me if I start choking up. My throat's kind of dry. It's a stupid medicine they <coughs> put me on for high blood pressure. Imagine that. I have high blood pressure. Uh, well, it runs in my family. My dad's got it. I think my grandfather had it. You know, and I didn't have it checked for a long time. And, you know, I got, got into my 40s. I'm like, I need to go to that freaking doctor and see what my, see what my prognosis is here. <laughs> you know, you fat bastard. Figure out what's wrong with you. So, so anyway, and that's why my throat dries out now and I start coughing and I have to eat like cough drops like candy. And, um, luckily I'm eating the sugar free ones and I gotta have a drink around all the time. It's just one of the side effects of the medicine. So it's no big deal. I'd, I'd rather deal with that than have high blood pressure, you know. So that is way off topic. Um, so I bought an Xbox at Vintage Stock because it was in the box. And I think it got two or three games with it. I think it was like 50 bucks or something at the time. Who knows what they want for them now. And uh, I think it got Ninja Guy Dan and um, i trying to think of what the other game. I think the other game I didn't really have a choice. It was like a sports title, like some kind of tennis game. And then I got to pick one, you know, kind of deal. As long as it was like under 20 or some shit. Who knows? I don't remember. But uh, the GameCubes I ended up finding at the thrift store and blah de blah Suffice it to say, it, my collecting for the Nintendo goes downward in incre increasingly the longer this along the systems go. Uh, I lied the other day when I said all I had was one Xbox 360 and no other systems I didn't have an extra of. Because I have a Wii, and I only have one of them, and I got it at the pawn shop for $25, but it was missing the power supply, and then I went to buy a power supply and found out they were almost as much as I paid for the Wii. So it was like, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. But I ended up buying a new case for that thing. I think I went over it about a couple years ago when I bought it. And... Uh, the case uh, was a bitch. There was like 5 million screws inside the, the Wii case to hold it on there. Way more screws than there needed to be. It was like they just did it just to be assholes so you wouldn't take, you know, change out the case. So you'd buy one of their multicolored cases, probably. Um, so anyway, and then I don't even own a Wii U. I have no desire to get a Wii U. I don't plan on getting a Wii U. I don't even... I, the Switch, I don't even care, you know, I mean, honestly. The only thing that ever got me to buy new uh, Nintendos anyway was were uh, Metroid games. Uh, you know, I mean, it's the reason why I was okay with getting a GameCube is because I actually wanted a couple of Metroid games, which we'll see when we get there if I have them or not, won't we? Um, and same thing with the Wii. I wanted to get Metroid Other M, and there was a couple of, there was a couple of games that I wanted, and I might actually have more games for the Wii than I do for the GameCube, to be honest. But really, I, I don't think so. I think it's about dead even. And like I said, that's kind of my love-hate with Nintendo is I really, really, really love the 8-bit Nintendo and all the games, good or bad, that came with it and everything and nostalgic about it. I really, really, really love the Super Nintendo. I remember when I got it, I remember how I thought the music was so much better because I had a Genesis first. And the music processor in the Super Nintendo is better than the Genesis. And it had way better music. It seemed to have better color depth. And it ran at a comparable speed to the Genesis. The Genesis made a big deal that Sonic was this hyped up super fast game. And Mario Kart and stuff wasn't that fast of a game. You know, but, you know, they both had their points, you know. And the Super Nintendo, I remember playing Link to the Past and Super Metroid, and I was so engaged. I, I mean, it sucked me in. I mean, bad. <laughs> uh, both games. And, and, and I didn't even plan on getting Link to the Past. It was just the pack-in game that came with the system. So I actually don't have it in the box. Um, 
because it was the pack-in game, but both of them were, were excellent games, in my opinion. And actually, Ocarina of Time is a good game. I, I, I got past the controller and was able to actually beat Ocarina of Time, and it's the only N64 game I ever even came close to beating. I almost, I got a ways into Rogue Squadron, but I didn't beat it. Um, and that's it, you know. And the Wii, I haven't even really played games on it. I, play, I goofed around with Mario Kart. And then I loaned Mario Kart to my sister because they had a Wii and the kids liked playing it. And she's still got it. She's had that game like three or four years that I gave it to her. Because I've got tons of games. I'm not worried about that. But anyway, I better speed this long or the battery might run out again. So anyway, that's that's kind of the deal with the, the, the Nintendo saga. And I was going to do a separate video on it, but I really just don't see the point at this point because we're showing the GameCube games tonight because I was lazy and didn't really have a better idea. Um, <coughs> time to cough and squirt water in my mouth. And dribble it down my front. Okay. So, I'm going to start with the games I just bought because, like I said, Captain Rass says, I'm kind of interested in those those GameCube games, kind of wonder what GameCube games you have over there, and I was like, hey, that sounds like a video, you know, so we're going to tee it up here. Uh, the deal was, I was buying the games, I tried to avoid vintage stock, and GameStop, at the time I started buying the Xbox, I bought an Xbox and the GameCube, they still had original Xbox and GameCube games at GameStop at that time, but they were phasing them out quick, so they were on sale. Uh, pretty cheap, and actually, I think a, in a, once in a blue moon, you can still find a couple GameCube games at a GameStop, but not every GameStop, and it's rare. I don't think they buy them in anymore. Um, so, so most of the ones I picked up, I either got at the pawn shop, the thrift store, or uh, I ordered them off the internet, and. Because of that, I mainly stuck to franchise titles and exclusives. So I do have a little stack here of non-exclusive titles, and then I have a, a taller stack that's about twice as tall of only four GameCube games, which I don't know if they ever really ended up releasing those. I think they did end up releasing a couple of them on other systems at some point. But I made a terrible mistake. Uh, I had glanced at the games before I uh, decided I was going to do the video. I glanced at the games and, fa and found that there were a couple that I was missing or thought I had and didn't and then didn't have and that I wanted. So I went back on eBay and I got a little happy with one of them and I'll, I'll explain when I open that one. But one of them, I forgot. I didn't forget, but I bought the wrong one. There... <laughs> There were two of them, like a, a two and a three, and I actually had two, and I should have bought three. But I thought I had three for some reason, and some makes me remember that somebody picked it up and showed it back in the day, like years ago, a couple years ago. And I was like, man, I, I didn't even know they made a Rogue Squadron 2, let alone a three. And well, I guess you know now. This is the pack. Uh... I went ahead and slit one open just for the hell of it uh, because I was sitting around picking my ass waiting for the camera to charge. It just so happened the first one I slit open was the one I bought. Uh, I don't need this, but I bought a Rogue Squadron 2. I need the third one, and it's an only four title. Uh, I had two, and now I have two twos. Two two. Great. Awesome. Anybody need a Rogue Squadron 2? I got one for uh, trade, exchange, or whatever. Oh, awesome. And then the dude sends it to me. It's in a normal a normal case, which I'm not complaining about the writing on the directions because I knew it had the writing on the directions. But the thing is, when he showed it in the ad, the picture he showed, he had this flat like this, and then he had the instruction book, I don't even know if I'm in frame. He had this flat like this, and then the instruction book here, and the game over here like this. So, it ends up it's a regular case. It's not even a GameCube case <laughs> that it's in. So, that's awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. 
damn cough. So I have an extra Rogue Squadron 2 now, I guess. I only paid $12 for it, so I'm not like really crying the blues. But I'm telling you what, in the last few, since I got back on eBay, I got a little happy buying shit. And I probably have blown about $50 or $60 on mistakes. Um, for one, I bought Genesis box sleeves when they use the same Nintendo ones for the Genesis, because they're the same size, that Nintendo 8-bit boxes and the Genesis uh, cardboard boxes. They both fit in there, but the Nintendo ones are a little loose in there, and they fit nice because I like that they're not snug in there. They, they sent me the exact same ones for the Sega Genesis, so, and they just cram in there. I mean, it doesn't bend up the box. Don't get me wrong. You're not damaging your stuff, but it just it fits like a condom, man. I mean, it's just like tied on, you know? So anyway, there's one exclusive title there, uh, Rogue Squadron 2. And I still need to get Rogue Squadron 3, because that's the one I really needed. And I didn't know, so oh well. But like I said, I've made about $50 or so in mistake buys, along with those repro uh, boxes I bought for the uh, Castlevania and the, um, the uh, what, what who, uh Super Mario. <clears throat> those are about eight or nine dollars a piece uh, and uh yeah they're not they're not good enough they're they're not quite they're not a counterfeit enough for me to put on my games in so they don't look enough the color's wrong and they're just not yeah i'm not gonna put my games in there um i think i know what this one is based on the what the ship where it shipped from i actually didn't expect to get all three of these on the same day uh, because it only said one of them was out for delivery today. So that's another reason why I didn't plan on doing this video tonight, but I am. This guy actually went to some trouble. He pack packaged it in a normal box and uh, put bubble wrap in it and stuff. But this is the one I, I was going to say. I keep saying getting happy. I got a little crazy. Uh, I was looking at, at this game, and this game, all the buy it now is it was going for like 50 you know, at least. And uh, I don't know if that'll give you an idea of what we're dealing with here, but um, there was one up for bid that ended in like an hour or so from the time I was looking. And the lo the bid on it at that time was like 550 you know, and nobody else had bid on it. And I knew there was some got to be some hawks waiting but, you know, I went ahead just to goose the price to see where it was uh, and entered like an $8 bid and it bumped it up to $7.50, but it said I was the highest bidder. And it held that price until like two minutes before the end of the thing. And I went back. Usually I don't bid on shit at all. And if I do, I usually don't go back. But this game goes for a little bit of money and I was like... Yeah, I'll go back and see if I can get this for under, you know, 20, you know, I will, you know, I didn't really look at what the shipping was and the shipping was a little more than I thought it was <laughs> or, or could have been a little lower, but that's not that bad. <clears throat> anyway, two minutes till suddenly the bid says I'm out bid and I had the page open. You know, I, had a, I was watching the counter on the actual page, and it said somebody bid on it. And so I threw in <laughs> a bid for like 10 bucks, and then it still said I was outbid. So I threw in a bid for 15 and it said I was the highest bidder again. But I don't remember what it said the, the low ball price was. But there was only like about a minute or so left. And uh, somebody bid on it again and, and outbid me. And I said... Fuck it, this is the last ditch effort here. I put the 20 in, because that's all I was going to pay for it was 20. And uh, it said I was the highest bidder again, and it was only like 40 seconds left, and it counted down, <clears throat> and I won it. Uh, I think the final thing was like $19.40 or some shit. <coughs> um, <coughs> golly, this cough. Usually I just eat a cough drop or something, but I don't have any here, and I'm not going to get up to go get them, so. 
Anyway, the game I bid on for $19, and then the shipping ended up being like $7.50, which I was like, damn, I didn't realize the shipping was that high, but I already had won the auction, so I was like, well, there you go, dude. Anyway, it doesn't have the directions. That's kind of a burn, but for a complete copy with the directions on a buy it now, and even the ones I saw people bidding on were going for over 20 I went ahead and picked up another uh, only four title, and it is the Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Now, from what I know, this is kind of a re kind of a redo of the Metal Gear Solid. Um, it says Metal Gear Solid Two: Sons of Liberty and Metal Gear Solid. So, I don't know. It says. Two of the greatest games of all time, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, are fused together to form a Nintendo GameCube classic. So I don't I don't I don't really know what this is 100 percent I thought it was just a redo of Metal Gear Solid. Uh, as Solid Snake, your mission is to resolve hostages from an Alaskan uh, rescue hostages from an Alaskan military installation and prevent a terrorist group from launching a nuclear strike for the first time ever. Experience Metal Gear Solid in a way that it was always meant to be played. A reinvented Metal Gear Solid game directed by Hideo Kojima. I hope I said that right. Or Hido. I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry if you're watching my video, sir, and I'm butchering your name. Stunning next generation graphics. That's the one thing I liked is I thought the graphics looked a little smoother. Um, awesome gameplay. Uh, acclaimed cinematic storyline. Blah -de blah -de blah -de blah. It's got your seizure warning thing in it, but like I said, no directions. And then it's got both discs. I didn't look at the discs to see how they look. They are fairly clean. Some minor surface scratching, but nothing that would even cause a hesitation. About as much as a fingerprint. But I really did want this one for a long time, and I never found it at Vintage Stock or or anywhere else, like GameStop or anywhere, never found it. So I had looked online for it, but at the time I was only buying on Amazon, and it was expensive on Amazon. So I think for, what is it, 26 something, this was a decent purchase. And it sounds like it, it's kind of a, a, not a rehash, but kind of a reimagining of two games and kind of melded together. So, I'll be interested to play this, maybe. And that's another thing. All these GameCube games, I have no opinion on whether they're good or not, because, to be honest, I have never really played them. The one I played the most, I'll explain when I get there. I say that a lot. Uh, but, yeah, there's one that I played a little more than the, more than the rest, which is pretty much none. <laughs> so, Metal Gear Solid was the second one I bought. And the third one relates to a peripheral I have that I bought at the thrift store a long time ago. And I had forgotten that I had never bought a game to play with it. So, this was a package if you care, and I almost stabbed myself in the foot with an X-Acto knife that fell off the table. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna try to speed this along because I'm losing my voice, I'm, I'm choking up because I'm just rambling a mile a minute. But a family store buy, I think they were $2. It might have been 99 cents. A long time back, I picked up these Donkey Kong bongos. And I never had a game to play with them. And I never really worried about it too much. But I was always like, ah, someday I'll pick up a game to play with these. Well, I never did. So... I went ahead and I picked up a game, and I think I paid $6.99 for this one. Uh, so, it's a don the original Donkey Konga, the first one. I know they made a second one, too, which I thought about picking up. Oh, look how nice. They put a thanks for your purchase sticky note on my, on my instruction book. You're welcome, sir or madam. Kind of looks like women, a woman's handwriting. Uh, I shouldn't. I, I write in cursive too, but it looks like shit. That actually looks too nice to be a dude's, especially if you write in cursive. That's a hefty instruction book, and it's all it, mainly in color. Uh, let's see. 
well, part of the instruction book is in, a, is in Spanish, but, I mean, or French. I can't tell what that is offhand. Nah, that's Spanish. Well, that might be French, though. It might have French and Spanish, to be honest. I don't know. But the instruction book and the disc. These two games were actually in the uh, real GameCube cases. So that's cool. And this was another only four. This one says only only four, and then it has only four in, like, Spanish or French. I don't know. It says Seloman Poor. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know. Sorry, I'm not, I'm just not bilingual. I mean, I know a few Spanish words, but it's just like cerveza and bendejo and, you know, I know how to count to ten. You know, that's about it. Agua. Speaking of agua. So I'm going to roll through these. Um, I don't have an opinion on most of them. A couple, one of these that I have on... Actually, two of the two or three of these that I have that aren't exclusives I played on the PS2. So I do have an opinion on them, but I think one of them is slightly different. Uh, the first one that's not a GameCube exclusive is Crazy Taxi. Uh, I don't know where I got these. Like I said, uh, it could have been the thrift store, could have been the pawn shop, could have been GameStop. Uh, not. I'm just not sure, but I'm sure I didn't spend quite a bit on them, money-wise. And uh, the instruction book is is complete in here, and the discs are here. I'm not going to pop the instruction book and the disc out for every single one at this point. There's not that many, but it's not. it would still take, there's probably t close to 20. Uh, the second one, I'm pretty sure I have this one, or I might have the other one on a... On PlayStation. Uh, Def Jam Vendetta. I have another Def Jam game on the PlayStation 2, but I don't know if it's this one. Uh, this is just kind of cool. Uh, cool game. Uh, for over 40 brawlers. Battle over the top with over 1,500 moves. Cinematic storyline. Uh, featuring DMX, Ludacris, Method Man, Red Man, Scarface, WC, and more. And it's just like... Um, I'm pretty sure it's just like a, uh, from what I remember, it was more just like a street, kind of a brawling, kind of street fighter type of thing. Uh, but I don't recall offhand if that's the case. Uh, let's see here. This had to have been cheap because I have no reason to buy it. Um, but I bought uh, this game, and I've heard people really. Uh, my, my my buddy that I worked with watched the whole damn animated series and said it was really good. And someday I should watch it and blah de blah. But I just I just don't care. <laughs> but uh, and I, they made a shitty movie too that I think they were going to do a couple of, and then they decided not to. Uh, but that is Avatar: The Last Airbender, uh, GameCube uh, game. Like I said, I, I have no real affiliation to this whatsoever. This is, looks like cell shading, uh, kind of cell shaded art or something in the game. That's why I thought it looked cool, because it looked kind of cell shaded. Um, but it's complete. And uh, go out in the hall and mess with it. So we got three there. Well, actually six if you count the seven if you count the double. Uh, the next one is probably was probably a, a thrift store or something by as well. Uh, that would be Need for Speed uh, Underground. I'm not a huge uh, racing fan. I've never been a racing game kind of guy. I do like road rash and motorcycle racing, but I've never been a fan of uh, of car racing. Uh, I don't mind like Mario Kart or. Uh, or F Zero, or, or other games, or Extreme G. I don't mind those games, but for some reason, just basic old car racing, I just don't really care. But it's better than uh, like a football game to me. So, you know, boxing, golf, and, and car racing are kind of on the same level. <coughs> Speaking of golf, uh, we have Outlaw Golf. Outlaw Golf is fun. Uh, if you've never played Outlaw Golf, you can choose scantily clad women or dudes with tattoos and shit that beat up their caddies. 
and uh, and uh, play uh, courses, strange courses and stuff. I might have got this one at Game Exchange because there's a Game Exchange sticker in it. And I'll leave that there since Game Exchange isn't here anymore. It doesn't look too bad. I'm looking at them anyway because I haven't looked at them. Uh, but it's complete. I'm guessing I didn't. I might have paid a little bit for that because I liked Outlaw Golf, but I played it on the PlayStation 2. There's a different mechanic to it. Like, I think on the Tiger Woods that I have for, I think I have like 06 or 07, the mechanic is you pull back on the joystick and then swing it forward to hit the ball. But the Outlaw Golf one, I think it's that way on the GameCube, but on the PlayStation 2, it's like Mario Golf where you click it when it goes back and then click it again in a little area. So, that one, I believe the GameCube one is to stick, and it seemed to me like it was harder on the GameCube. Uh, this one is another one that I thought was kind of cool. Uh, I had seen this, and I didn't have it for the PlayStation, so when I found it, I went ahead and bought it for the uh, GameCube, even though it's not an exclusive. And that's the game iNinja. iNinja. Complete. Um... I think all four of the games, I'm missing instructions on four games, and I believe they're all the only four, so. Uh, the last one I also have on GameCube, but, or not GameCube, uh, PlayStation 2, uh, it's a Lara Croft game, Tomb Raider Legend. <laughs> that fucking cat. Will you quit it? Stop! Jeez Louise. It's like, yeah, I don't get it. It's like I'm not paying attention to them, so they got to act the fool. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I've only been in here like 10, 12 minutes, I hope. Complete. <coughs> Let's keep rolling. Now, this one doesn't say only four in the corner, but it's definitely only four. Well, it's not only for the GameCube. That's why it doesn't say only four in the corner. Uh, it is the game Twilight Princess. Now, I heard there's a difference between this one and the uh, Wii one. Like, the GameCube one, he's, like, left-handed, and on the Wii, he's right-handed because most people are right-handed, and you can swing the sword with the the thing or whatever. I don't know. I heard that was the case, but I don't know if it is for sure. Uh, I got this one at the thrift store, I remember. and I, Not thrift store, uh, pawn shop. And I paid close to 20 for it. But I thought it was worth it. Uh, it's a Zelda title. And it was, it was the latest Zelda title at that time that was out. Okay, folks, this shit's getting ridiculous. I gotta, like, plow through this here. I thought I was on there for 10 or 12 minutes. The cat jumped up and did that shit, and I had like a minute left. It was like right after I checked the, the thing to make sure it was still on, it clicked off. And I didn't hear it because I was talking too much. Uh, I, I, I don't like just going, here it is, here it is, here it is, because I think that's kind of lame. But, I mean, this video, I mean, all my videos are just like super long. It's just like, and here I am talking again, wasting fucking two minutes talking about how long my videos are. <clears throat> I don't remember what I said about most of these, and now they're in a different order than when I was doing them, but here we go. First one is, these are all only fours. Enter, uh, Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. I heard this was a must-buy for it. You kind of, it gets crazier and crazier the more you go, and most de the decisions you make or whatever kind of affect the crazy level. Uh, from what I from what I remember, that's kind of the gist, and I don't really remember a lot about the actual game. And I told you I don't have an opinion on most of these, or if I didn't, I don't have an opinion on most of these because I haven't played most of them. Um, I might as well just do this now. Where's the other one? Uh, I'm just gonna show. There's four of them that don't have instructions, and I'll just put them on top and plow through them. Uh, the first one is. Star Fox Adventures. This one still has a sticker from the thrift store on the back. A yellow sticker. I think at one time the color coding mattered, but I don't recall at this point. I haven't bought anything at the thrift store in a while. 
It's just the disc. I checked these as I was going through, but I didn't pull them all out of the cases. Uh, this one was okay. Uh, this next one is a GameCube. Uh, I'm not GameCube exclusive. These are all game. I'm not going to say that again. Uh, they're all GameCube exclusives, uh, or at one time were. Uh, I think I know a two or three of them aren't. Uh, I'm not sure. I know one of them isn't. Uh, but I'm not sure if the game is different like the one from the Twin sna Snakes thing. Uh, Super Smash Brother Melee. Uh, this is also missing the directions. And it's just the disc. But this one's uh, got quite a few surface scratches on it, but it does play. I remember sticking it in and playing it a little bit. I'm not a big fan of fighting games anymore, so I mean it was kind of novel to see all the Mar the Nintendo franchise characters, but you know, okay. Uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. What are you tearing into now? A uh, Mario Kart Double Dash includes bonus disc. Has a seizure warning. It has the bonus disc. It says it has playable demos on it. It doesn't say what demos. But it looks like on the cover of it that it might have a Smash Brothers demo on here. Not sure, though. And the final one I just have the directions for, or just the directions, just the game in the case, uh, minus the directions, is Luigi's Mansion. I pretty much, I went, I pretty much went hog wild and bought any exclusive or only four that I found. Because I figured, if they're only fours, I'm only going to be able to play them on the GameCube, so I might as well buy them. The other ones, that's what I'm saying, I don't think I paid very much for them, because they were, you know, not only fours. Except for the Twilight Princess, which, you know, is on the Wii. I mean, it's a Nintendo exclusive, so. I was like, at first I was like, why doesn't this say only four on it, but it's not only for the GameCube, so. That's why it doesn't say only four on it. <coughs> I was talking about this one. The, the case art looks wavy and shit. This is when I noticed that the camera was off. So it was farther down in the stack at one point. But I might as well put it up where his brother was. Uh, Super Mario Sunshine. The art looks like it got wet at one point. It's kind of wavy. Uh, I could maybe uh, scan, uh, scan it and getting that wave out in Photoshop or something's kind of hard. It'd be easier to try to find some other case art that's in better shape and just print it I match the color as good as you can so uh, this one is complete though and I got it at this grimy ass pawn shop that smelled like engine grease because all the tools and shit in there and it was one of those pawn shops it's it's not that far from my it's like a couple miles from my work but for some reason it's just an old school pawn shop and they like have the the porn corner with the curtain and the fucking um they actually have like firearms and shit in there and most of the like cash america ones and stuff here they don't have firearms in them anymore so or if they do they don't put them out on the floor so uh that's kind of fucked up <laughs> i saw this i saw this handle here and it looked like he was holding a dildo or something <laughs> i don't know i'm sorry but i was like when the hell's mario got his hand wrapped around there <laughs> that's kind of goofy looking uh, anyway, I might have been the first person to point that out. Thanks, Nintendo. Uh, I haven't really played it. No, no. Uh, this one I'm not sure, and I think it was released on the PlayStation 2 later on. Uh, that would be the game Beautiful Joe. And I've heard, I've seen good things about this game, and so that's why when I saw it, uh, wherever I got it, I went ahead and picked it up. And it says only four on it as well, which is a bonus, but I'm pretty sure they came out with it on PlayStation 2 eventually. I'm pretty sure. Uh, F-Zero GX, 30 pilots, 20 courses, one champion. We'll complete. I've had these same songs on freaking mix forever, and it's like driving me nuts because I'm hearing the same ones for like the third time. Uh, this is kind of a redo of a original title that was on the PlayStation. Excuse me. 
Not sure what they really changed other than graphically updating it and changing the voice. The voiceover acting, which kind of, that was the reason why I was kind of like, oh man. Because I love I love the ch over the top cheesy voice acting uh, in the original game. And that's why I was just like, kind of like, when they I realized they changed the voice acting, I was like, oh man. But since they updated the graphics, I understand. But it's the game Resident Evil. It's the only four. The, the, graphically, this looks awesome. I just prefer the Barry voice where he's like, boy. Hope this isn't Chris's blood. And he's like, chill. Here is <coughs> the lockpick for you, the master of unlocking. Barry was the best in the original game. And uh, yeah, I was, I just, did, I, for some reason, I just didn't like it as much because the, the cheesy voice acting was different. Even Wesker, I mean, all of it was different, so. Um, but that that was a must-have, in my opinion, for the GameCube as well. There were there were a couple that I think I did get at Vintage Stock because I felt like they really were worth paying for. And I, I, Resident Evil, I'm pretty sure I did. I think I got it on one of those buy to get ones, though. Along with one of these other ones that's in this stack. Well, maybe two of the other ones that was in this stack. I might have went... Well, we might as well go with it. Uh, I might have went Resident Evil crazy that night and bought three three GameCube games, but another one, uh, Resident Evil Zero, and only four. I did start playing this at one point, and I did get a little ways into it, so I do have an opinion. I thought it was good. Um, I, I don't remember if it's got tank controls or not. I really hate tank controls now, which is the way the original pl uh, PlayStation Resident Evil was, where up's always forward, no matter what direction you're facing. Uh, it's complete. It does have the directions and stuff. I believe, I forget the, the girl's name. What was her name? Do, 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 do. I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. Rebecca Chambers. So, I don't know. I, I definitely glad to have it. And let's say that same token. Uh, this was an only four, but it, they did eventually release it on PlayStation 2, and that would be Resident Evil 4. My hand fucking cramping. I, I must be dehydrated. I keep drinking water like a fool, and I'm still dehydrated. Uh, complete as well. I think there are some slight differences between the PS2 one and this one. I don't recall, and I don't quote me on it. But, like I said, I think I went Resident Evil nuts on a buy-to-get one, and they had all three games, so I just got them all. I got one of them free, and I don't remember which one. This was a pawn shoppy, old, ye old pawn shoppy purchase. Uh, that would be Wind Waker. I'm holding it upside down. Here, turn it upside down. Turn it all around. Do the hokey pokey and whatever. Uh, this is probably a pawn shop because it has a, a number in, in marker on the inside. I don't know if I... Yeah, I did say pawn shop. <coughs> It's got a memory card in it. I'm pretty sure I put it in there. Uh, I believe at one point I did start to play this. And so I put the memory card in there so I could, you know, have intention to play it. Uh, okay, we're getting to the bottom three. The bottom three are kind of my favorite three. And they're the ones I, I spent the most time on. Uh, this one is the fourth from the bottom. And I'm pretty sure my buddy Mitch Hall talked about this game. Now, I'm not 100% sure... Mitch, if you talk about this, leave a comment, or uh, tell me in your comment if you want to leave one, uh, if you did or not. Uh, do a, do a uh, gameplay video on it, or just talk about it, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it was you. It was definitely somebody that I watched fairly often. And that was the game Geist. It just looked really interesting. I really didn't know what it was, and this one might have been a PS2 uh, port later on as well. But you can, like, possess people and stuff. It was it was kind of weird. Like, you project your mind. It's kind of like that movie where Dreamscape or whatever, where you could go into somebody else's head. So, uh, Geist Complete. I'm pretty sure it was Mitch. Mitch, if it wasn't you, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm calling you out about it, but I'm pretty sure it was.
whatever it was, I highly valued their opinion, and they thought it was excellent, so I went out, and the next time I saw it, I bought it. Uh, <coughs> oh, goodness. Okay, I'm glad this is coming to an end, because I'm, I'm, like, killing myself here. I should have just brought the damn bag of cough drops in here, and I wouldn't be having this problem. I should have just got one when the camera went off, but I forgot, because I was pissed off that it went off. Uh, and I had to backtrack through about 12 games, so I did plow through those just now. I'm sorry if I did and you didn't get a good look. If you want to see any of them more in more detail or maybe see me actually play it for the first time, because I've never played it, uh, let me know. I think I played Twilight Princess and Wind Waker before. I know I played the Resident Evil Zero, uh, the Resident Evil Zero. I don't really think I put a lot of time in on the Resident Evil, and I've never played Twin Snakes. I think I stuck Mario Sunshine in just to kind of uh, goof around with it for a minute. And same thing with uh, Smash Brothers Melee. I'm not really a fighting game fan anymore. So uh, this one, I this is the one I put some time into, and I forget who's talking about shooters. And they were talking about vertical shooters. I think it was this Nastastic. I think it was Pete was talking about how he does better at horizontal shooters than vertical shooters. And this is a vertical shooter. And it's weird because you can actually tell it to orient your TV uh, tall. And I guess you could turn your TV on its side on one of these tall TVs, you know, 16 by 9s. And it would be like super, you know, super cool like that. Um, I've never tried that, but I'm pretty sure you can do it in the game. This game is hard as fuck, and I, I found it at GameStop, and I think I paid a penny for it because it's a hard game to get a hold of, and it says only four, and I am i don't know if they released this. They might have released, excuse me, I'm wiping my nose on my hand and all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure this came out on another system eventually. It might have been on a PAL version or uh, something like that, but it's the game Ikaruga. And Ikaruga, you're you're it's a it's a space shooter, but you have like these you fire like white white energy blasts and red energy blasts, and you have a shield. And if you're shooting red and you go through red bullets, it, they don't hurt you. And if you're shooting white and they're white bullets, they don't hurt you. But if it's the other way around, they kill you. So you're constantly having to ping pong back and forth between red and white while you're doing what you need to do. And I never got very good at it. It's very challenging. Very, very challenging. It's definitely, and I'm not a big shooter guy, but it is definitely worth the money and worth playing. Uh, if you at all, at all like a shooter now and again, um, I would recommend it. I don't know what it goes for nowadays. I'm pretty sure I paid close to 20 for it at GameStop, and I was surprised they had a complete copy with the directions. A lot of times you get this shit at GameStop, it doesn't have the case art, or it doesn't have the directions. There's always something missing. So this is a complete copy, so I'm pretty sure I paid like close to 20 for it. But I was glad to have it, and I still am glad to have it. Uh, and I highly recommend Ikaruga. I have put in some time on it. Uh, you could watch me play it, but the video would be like three minutes long because I'm not very good at it. <coughs> and I'm definitely out of practice. This here is a... This was one of those purchases where I went to... Uh, I'm sorry about this video, folks. I'm just... I'm in bad shape here. I was sick yesterday, I told you. And just today, I'm just not 100%. And I'm getting hand cramps. I'm, I'm choking up because I'm drying out. Uh, but I went into GameStop, not GameStop, Finish Stock, and for a while they would put a an employee recommendation section. And they'd have like, you know, Mark's choices and, and Vicky's choices and whoever. And there'd be like four or five of them and they would have different things on there. It might be movies, it might be video games, it might be um, anything. It, it could be for any system too. It wasn't just like the latest thing. And uh, one of the guys had this GameCube game on his deal, whoever it was that was at the top of the shelf, because I was walking by and it caught my eye as I was walking by. And I think I paid a penny for it, but it just looked so quirky. And I did do a gameplay on this at one time, and I believe you can find it under the title if you want to check it out. Uh, I still have the gameplay up. 
The game is called, and it's an only for, Chibi Robo. And you're this little robot that goes around cleaning things in this house. And uh, it's, a, it's like a full-size house, and you're this little bitty dude. And you got to figure out how to navigate the house and clean stuff and, and cook things and stuff. And it's really kind of fun. Uh, it's definitely a quirky game, but it kind of reminded me of what's that game on the Dreamcast or whatever, where your uh, to your toys like like different toys, but you can you play through and everything's like super big because it's like life size to the size of the toy or whatever. I'm trying to remember what the name of that game is. Ah, doesn't matter. <clears throat> but Chibi Robo, I did do a gameplay on it. I will put the link just right below this. The first thing in my description down below, if you want to check it out, um, I did do a gameplay on it at one point, and I think it's fun. I think it's quirky and fun, and I never finished it, but I had fun with it. I enjoyed it, and and that's all that really matters to me anymore in life. I don't really care whether I how many what my gamer score is or how many achievements I unlocked or, you know, if, even if I finished it, just as long as I enjoyed it for a minute and had fun. Uh, that's all I can ask, and this game this game did it for me. I got my money's worth. Might go back to it someday. I hope to. I hope to go through all these games someday, but I'm not going to live to be 10,000, so I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, final game is what I was talking about. It's the reason why I usually buy most Nintendo franchise or buy consoles. And that would be... Uh, this is actually a... a I believe it's a two-disc set. Uh, it's Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime Echoes. And I believe it's like a dual... It's a... Yeah, it's it's got... It's got Metroid Prime 2 Echoes on a bonus disc and then Prime and the original. I was going to buy them separate, but when I saw that they made this one where they both came together in one case... I was like, it's it's just worth it to me to just buy the one that's got both of them in it. And that that's good enough for me. Instructions look crispy. I think I might have even bought this on Amazon. It's got all the goodies. It's got the uh, Metroid Prime Time uh, Nintendo Power Ad. They're really enthused with this box from the uh, Twin Snakes. I don't know if that guy maybe had cats. They're just going nuts trying to get into that box. This is just a quick kind of uh, controller, you know, controller controls. That looks like 8-bit Metroid. What in the hell is that? There might have been some downloadable games or something. I don't know. For some reason, right here, they have the original Metroid and Metroid Password screens in this box and I don't, or in this window, and I don't really know why. I don't really know why. Oh, it says, play the original Metroid on your NES. Uh, link, link with Metroid Fusion to play Metroid on your Nintendo GameCube. I don't know how you do it. I think this explains it, but I don't know. Anyway, I don't need to play it on my GameCube because I have a couple copies of it to play on my real Nintendo that I still have. And I have an emulated uh, soft-modded Xbox that's got the whole Nintendo library on it. So, anyway, that one's complete. And that wraps up my GameCube collection. I think that's about... I think it's more than 20, I think. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, sixteen, twenty-five, twenty-six, counting the Rogue Squadron I already had, and then I just bought, well, two new ones. One of them is a double of one I already had that I shouldn't have bought because I should have bought Rogue Squadron three. So, uh, so basically, I have twenty-eight games. That's not horrible. But it's definitely on the lower end of most systems that I own. Uh, you know, Super Nintendo is kind of the same way. I maybe have about 20 to 30 games. Um, the uh, 
I was really freaking surprised the other day because I was looking at my PS3 games. I have like 97 PS3 games, and I didn't even know I had that many. So uh, I know it's not retro, but I plan on doing a PS3 uh, game collection video uh, sometime in the future. I was going to say near future, but who knows. Uh, so that's it, Cat Mraz. Just for you, buddy. Uh, well, it wasn't just for you. It's for the royal you. But he was the instigator, so you can thank him for the video. And uh, go check out Cat Mraz sometime. He does good videos. And uh, it just seems like he could use some more uh, some more watching over there. So go over and see him. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to quit choking and coughing because I'm going to quit talking. Uh, it's almost 11 o'clock at night, so I'm probably going to go to bed soon instead of... I kind of want to go play an XCOM mission, though, and then I might go to bed. Got work in the morning. I'm no longer sick, and I have no sick days, so I can't call in. So, No staying up all night and then calling in because I have a, a Nintendo hangover. Uh, I always call it a Nintendo hangover, but video game hangover. So, thanks for coming by, folks. That's kind of a vid in three parts. One, because the camera died. Two, because I wasn't paying attention to the time. And three, this is the end, and I'm hoping it's still running, God damn it, Yes, it is. Uh, so, uh, I'm signing off. Uh, another one in the can. Another one in the can. Thanks for coming by, really. I do appreciate it. We're wrapping up the year, and I, I know it's another year, and I know I kind of tried to tried to come back here and, and hit it hit it hard and I I plan to stick to the the one video a week thing. I know I was getting them up more often than that, but it, it's kind of uh, balancing back out now where I really feel like I can get back into the swing of of one video and that's enough, dude. You don't got go crazy. The problem is I like doing videos because I like interacting with you folks. And when you leave comments, I like getting the comments and typing back responses. I even like it when you respond to my response because that is just, that's over the top. So, uh, yeah, so that's why I really put out so many videos is because I crave the interaction between y'all in the comments and stuff. And that's, that's part of the reason why I miss so much of the, uh, the way, the way things, uh, the way things could be. Yeah, I'm not going to say were, could be, uh, because, you know, I mean, that that was a lot of the interacting and a lot of the fun and the and the punch of doing it, and that that's what I really enjoy. And I still enjoy it. I enjoy this, too, I, I, you know, on a, on, on a same but equal but different level, you know what I'm saying? Equal and different at the same time. That doesn't make sense, does it? Anyway, I'm out of here, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.